So hey guys, this is Kenesha with VeryThoughtfulLife.com coming to you with today's Thought for Thursday. Today I want to encourage you to pay attention to your story. Um, many times we go about our life and we tell the same stories. So if you li start listening closely to the kind of stories you're telling and the stories that you're sharing, um, for a lot of us we got hurt when we was kids in some kind of way. Whether it's you know, we thought we should have been treated better by our parents or we was hoping to have a better relationship with our siblings. Um, there's just some story and perhaps like many people have been abused in really ugly ways. Here's the thing. Bad things happen to all of us and um, it affects us greatly. But what happens a lot of the times is it's really good to tell your story to get it out and with hopes of moving forward and finding healing. But if you're telling your story to gain pity or gain attention, you are stuck in your story. So you, you are um, missing out on the life in the future you could have because you're stuck in the past. And I get it, like pain will grip our life. That, that is the truth. But there comes a time when you have to take control and you have to take responsibility and you have to decide that I'm not going to allow this story to keep being the tape that's playing in my background. Um, if you can't hear it in your own story, spend the next few days listening to people that you spend a lot of time with and listen to the stories they tell and see if you can hear them one sharing the same experiences and the same stories or like the the common thread in their pain story so a lot of us we become kind of the victim in our life and so our story is constantly about who did us wrong um, how they hurt us um, how you never gonna let that happen again because I remember a girl when I was 12 and she did that and I told myself then so the your story you think your story is about your past and oftentimes we will get so stuck in the pain of the story then we'll use that today to talk about how if they understood and I really wish our relationship was better or um, I, if they just hurt me out and maybe if my sister was better to me or my brother was better to me or my father was, you know, treating me this way, my life would be better. Here's the thing. When you're a kid, you are somewhat helpless to some of the things that happen to you. Um, however, when you become an adult, you can now choose to make a, a decision from your adult place. And it, it will seem hard and it may seem, for some of us, impossible. Because we've lived kind of at that childlike level for so long in our thinking and in our story that we are not even aware that in instant we can shift it and we can change it um and i get it like it hurts it's buried under a lot of pain and it, it sounds like what i'm saying is very kind of flippant and and uncaring but it's not i say this wholeheartedly that i i hope for you as you're listening to this and you start reflecting on what stories do I tell? Um, am I the victim? Am I telling stories about something that happened to me when I was three, five, eight, seven, nine, where I had no control? It imprinted this belief on my life where I'm helpless or I'm full of rejection, um, I'm unworthy. It may have imprinted that on your life. And so you keep telling the story thinking like if I find the right person to tell the story to, then they can convince those people that did me wrong and the person that hurt me the most how important it is that they right their wrong. Here's the thing. Um, people in our past that tend to hurt us, one thing to consider is that they are hurting themselves. Another thing is that they may not even be aware of the type of pain they're causing you because of their own pain. And then um, the third thing I want you to consider is they, they may just not even be capable of giving you the type of love, attention, affection that you should have gotten. 
So at, at some point, in order to move forward and to live the life of your dreams and to live that, you know, that great life that you know is inside of you, um, you got to let go of that story. Or you got to find the strength in the story. So bad things happen to all of us. Like really bad things have, have happened to some, some of us. And I know for some of us it's traumatic. And if you need like that extra help with counseling and therapy, I say, please go get it. But what I don't want you to do is if the bad thing happened when you was a kid. And so from, I don't know, 5 to 15, however old that happened or that negative imprint, or maybe it was a one-time occurrence or a reoccurrence from one person where it wasn't physical, it was just emotional scarring. Um, decide today that you are not going to allow them to have that power over your life anymore because you won't tell the story from that place anymore. So it happened. I'm really sorry for the hurt that it caused, but what strength did it bring you? Um, did it make you more cautious with people? Did it make you, or did you find out you were stronger than you ever thought you were? Um, by your, your parents not being there for you, did you have to accomplish some things that other kids had to, uh, could easily depend on their parents for, but you were still able to accomplish that task, graduate from college or get your driver's license or find that job, buy your own apartment, whatever that thing is you was able to do in spite of not having the help, not having the support. That's the strength that can be gained from the story, gained from the experience. So if you can work really hard at trying to focus on what did did the experience offer me other than pain? Um, perhaps the person you wanted to love you and the way you want them to love you and the way that you expected them to love you because sometimes we have these expectations on our family members but just out of the simple notion, well, that's my, my father, that's my sister, that's my brother, that's my mother. They should or they're supposed to love me a certain way. They're supposed to be there for me. They're supposed to show up every time um, and be there. That is... It seemed realistic in the world that tells us, like, you know, this family style Brady Bunch mentality that your family should be this. Well, technically, perhaps they should be. But if they haven't been, you just got to accept that. You have to deal with it and you have to say, okay, th that person wasn't there for me. Perhaps my mom wasn't there for me. Perhaps my dad wasn't there for me. But wow, I'm so blessed that I had this amazing grandma who no matter what I did, she dropped everything to be there. I, what I've learned is that when God said he will provide our every need, he provides it. He provides us with the love we need. He provides us with the security we need, with the safety. However, sometimes it just does not look like the way we think it should look. So if you have set in your heart and your mind that the love you want should come from your husband or the love you want should come from your, your sister or your your um, best friend or well, if they really love me, they would do this if that was my mom or whatever. Think about the people that got a place in your life that really do love you, that shows up every time, that no matter what, no matter what, they're the ones that's there. Those are the people we usually take advantage of. We get, you know, kind of flip it. Yeah, yeah, they're always there, but, but, you know, this person isn't. If you learn to really appreciate those that are there, if you learn to see the gift in the bad experience, you know, the strength that it gave you, the, the tenacity, the ability to stand up and do things that some people your age can't do or have never done because you were so determined because this pain that came into your life. If you start just shifting, shifting your perception, you will start shifting your life. Um, so very thoughtful is all about changing your thoughts so you can change your life. And I promise you guys, if you change your story, 
if you start telling your story from a place that is empowering and not disempowering, your life will change. So if you're spending all your time trying to figure out why they don't love me, what can I do to get them to love me? If, um, if only they would love me, then my life would be better. If you're spending your time in that cycle of a, of a mental place, it's a waste. I'm sorry to have to be the one to tell you. You may never know the answer to those questions. You may never be able to get that person or those people that you think that should love you a certain way to love you the way you think you should be loved. But I can promise you this. If you would open your heart to the idea and the belief that there is a Heavenly Father that loves you abundantly and then start loving on yourself. Start taking the time to, here's an assignment. Here's a, a little tool that can help you. Take the time every day for the next five days. And before you do anything, think of five things you love about yourself. And really think about that. Like, what are five things I love about myself? And maybe the five things is that, mm, one, I'm a loyal friend. Two, um, I work really hard to see the best in people. Three, um... I go out my way to be there for others for, you know, whatever your list is. So when you write down your list and you see your five things that you think you are to other people, then look and say, who's that for me? And when you realize, okay, wow, like this person is that for me, be thankful for that person. Spend time, um, being grateful for, for them, instead of wasting time meditating on who's not that person for you. And I promise you, this will offer you that shift that you need. So, in order to create the life you want, you've got to take control of your thoughts. You've got to decide and determine what you're going to spend your mind space thinking about. And if it's just your old story, I promise you, like, at some point, you got to get tired of hearing it. You got to get tired of telling it. And probably the people around you may be a little bit tired of your story. Because they would get so excited to hear you tell a new story. And if you're around people who enjoy your story, they probably got a sad story too. So it's just like all of this, <laughs> these stories that you guys get together and have these great pity parties. And oh my God, your life is bad. My life is bad. And let's meet again next week to talk about how bad our life is. Stop. <laughs> how about, hey, for the next week, we're not going to talk about anything that is from our past unless we're talking about the power of it. So perhaps your story is, um, no, my mother wasn't around. But man, I had this amazing grandma who cooked me amazing meals every single time. That when the school um, sent me work, even though she couldn't help me, she would hire somebody to make sure that I understood my schoolwork. So that becomes your story. And do you know how cool it is to be raised by an older woman? Do you know how much stuff she taught me? Because there is a power in that. But we got in, but so the mind will tell you, oh, your mama didn't love you because if she loved you, she wouldn't have been there. But let's look at the people that did love you and let's look at the people that were there. And when you start embracing that, then you can start seeing yourself better. You start telling a better story. And now, with your better story, you start creating the life you want. But your old story will never give you a new life. So I really want you guys to take time today, this Thursday, reflect on what stories do I tell what words are coming out of my mouth? What, am, what do I hear myself saying all the time? Is it a pity story or is it a powerful story? And if it's a pity story, check yourself. Even in the midst of telling a pity story, as you hear it rolling out and you kind of get into the trance because you told the story so long, it's almost like a trance happened and you feel the emotions of what it felt like when they did this to you. Stop yourself and say, you know what? Never mind. I don't want to tell that story anymore. And then start pr practicing your new story of what your life is going to be and what all the things you're going to have in your new life because of all of the greatness that came out of even the negative experiences. 
And remember, what, what others meant for bad, God would use for good. You got to learn to look for the good in your experiences and in your stories. Because I promise you, they are there. So this is Kenesha Berry with BerryThoughtfulLife.com. Reach out if you want help, if you want to be coached. I'm really good, guys, at helping you learn who you are, getting very clear about who you are, the gifts that are inside of you. I can help you tap into that. I can show you how your life experiences are leading you to your promise. But a lot of us miss it because we're stuck in the pain of the experience instead of seeing the gift of the experience. I'm As a life coach, I'm really good at doing that. So if you need help being pulled out of your old story so that you can start writing a new one, don't just watch these videos and read my newsletter. Reach out to me. Work with me. Let's do a few sessions. See how you like it. I've seen people change after their first session. They have these amazing aha moments and they start their new path of like, boom, my life is about to change right now because of this one session I've had with you. Coaching can be that powerful. It requires you to do the work. It's not just about me and what I can tell you. It requires you to do the work, but I've seen it. If you do the work, if you get in there and start doing the sessions that I offer you, just one can shift your life immediately. So stop just living life and kind of letting life happen and hoping, wishing, and praying for change. You become the change that you want. You begin to write your new story. The power to do this is within you. I really hope you guys are paying attention to these Thoughtful Thursdays. I hope you're using the tips of them, um, the, the, the little tips that I give and the nuggets to change the life and begin to live your dreams and, the, and have the destiny that you want. This is Kenesha Berry signing off with BerryThoughtfulLife.com. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>